It appears we are about to experience a polar vortex, and that means it's going to get very, very cold. Also, what are we to make of the new guidelines on alcohol? Dr. Christopher Labos joins us. Hi, Chris. Hi, Miss. So, Chris, what happens when our bodies are exposed to extreme cold? Well, your body's going to try to maintain its core temperature, so it's going to set off a series of physiologic compensations. Your heart rate's going to go up. You're going to start hyperventilating. Your blood vessels are going to constrict so you don't lose heat in your extremities. Um, and that's going to put a you know, significant strain on your heart. Once you get into the later stages, though, if you're outside for a long period of time and your body is no longer able to maintain your core temperature, the opposite starts happening. Your heart rate starts slowing. Your blood pressure starts dropping. You start getting a little bit sluggish neurologically. Uh, and so that's what happens you eventually go into a cardiovascular and neuro neurological collapse and if you stay outside and, and uh, for long enough you will eventually slip into a coma that's how people die when they're exposed to cold for long periods of time and who are more vulnerable so in theory everybody's at risk right anybody if you put them out in a cold enough temperature they will Truly freeze to death. I mean, but the people who are most at risk are, you know, the elderly, people with pre existing medical conditions. But there's a few other things that put you at higher risk too. If you're dehydrated, uh, if you drink alcohol, we often think that alcohol warms you up if you're cold. In fact, it does the opposite. Alcohol can make uh, cold exposure worse. And people who have underlying medical conditions, diabetes is something that can sort of blunt your response uh, to realize that you're getting cold. And so that's an issue. So there's, you know, every medical problem can make things a little bit worse. And especially if you have a cardiovascular problem, anything that raises your blood pressure and makes your heart beat faster is going to put more strain on your heart and, you know, potentially cause cause some problems. So if we're out there in the cold, Chris, what are the signs that we should be watching out for for hypothermia or frostbite? If you start feeling unwell, that's a bad sign. If you start losing the you know, sensation in your fingers because they're getting cold, go inside and warm up. If you start seeing that you're neurologically a little bit sluggish, if you're like stumbling a little bit, uh, that's a sign that you've been out for too long, get inside. And if you really start to feel unwell, if you feel that you're hyperventilating and your heart is beating really fast and you're really struggling, get inside because uh, you know, a lot of these things are reversible. All you have to do is warm up again, and that's sort of the key point. If you have to do an outdoor activity like shoveling your driveway, uh, the best thing to do is to break it up, go inside and warm up, because that's going to reverse all of these things before they start to cause permanent damage to your body, which happens in the later phases. And what precautions should we all be taking? It's it's you know dress warm dress warm if you dress warm you're gonna be you're gonna be okay now nothing's gonna happen to you for like the 15 minutes if you go grocery shopping but if you have to spend a long time outdoors dress warm and have some sort of plan for taking breaks where you can rewarm again that's the thing don't have long extended periods outside and dress warm if you have to do those things now Chris I want to get to those new alcohol guidelines there are no health benefits then what happened to the idea that a glass or two of wine was good for us. Uh, I think we have to blame Morley Safer for that one. I mean, his, his 60 minute story really cemented the idea of red wine being good for your heart. In fact, it's not. There's been a lot of studies since then. The U-shaped association that we see with alcohol is actually a statistical artifact. It, it's not actually true. Alcohol is not good for your heart. It raises your blood pressure. It's delivering a lot of sugar. It increases your risk of diabetes. It makes you gain weight. It predisposes you to arrhythmias. It's not great. You are, you are truly going to be healthier if you drink less. That is, I think, I hope, uh, broadly accepted by the medical community, even though there are still some holdouts that think red wine is good for you. Because this, uh, this report has raised a lot of debate. I mean, does this mean that we should all just stop drinking? Well, here's the thing. You don't have to stop drinking in the same way that you don't have to stop eating ice cream or stop eating french fries or start, stop binge watching nine hours of Netflix. None of those things are bad for you, but you shouldn't do them very often. And that's the thing. The point I think of this report is really to sort of shake loose this idea that alcohol is good for you. It's not. If you want to drink alcohol, you can drink alcohol. Just don't drive afterwards and drink small amounts because, frankly, you're going to be healthier if you drink less. So if you can drink less, you will have less blood pressure, less diabetes, less a lot of stuff, less cancer risk, too. So that's that's, I think, the point, realizing that alcohol is not good for you and that we could shoot all, we, we will all be better draw off if we drank a little bit less. Okay. Thank you very much for this, Chris. Thanks. Take care.